Today, without further uh, ado, my nonsense, I think Dave, what you could, I would I'd like to introduce the fly again and explain what, what okay. characteristics and such, and take it away. It's all yours. It's a very interesting pattern, and I thought it was interesting even from the point of view of if it were uh, from a little rivalry between he and Harry Darby, and it were in fact his answer to Harry Two Feather, it's, it's kind of like that fly, but it has a feature that makes it even better in my own mind, but it also makes it a little more difficult to tie. Interestingly enough, they tell me, I'm, I'm, I'm not totally anti-internet, but I have to say I haven't taken much advantage of it yet. I will before I get old. But I know, as John Kay mentioned, there, there's some talk about the fly on the internet. But in print, I've only found two articles ever written about it. They both appeared uh, reasonably enough in the same magazine, American Fly Tire, done by two different people. The first of which was done in 1981 by Ted Niemeyer, uh, who had a couple of years before that been given uh, the fly by Walt Deddy, told him to try it, and he did. And he claims in the article even to have been the one that that uh, Walt had called it several different things, and he came up with the name Riffle Dunn and asked Walt what he thought of it, and Walt gave it his blessing and wrote about it then in 1981. I can tell you it's a, it's a tricky fly to tie, and then you look at it and you be totally happy with the results. You gotta do it a few times. I've got two or three with me. I got this one, I tied two or three days ago. And in the process of time, just a half a dozen of them, I decided to do one thing different, and I, I cannot for the life of me see any reason not to, and it makes it easier to tie. And I decided that for me, this riffle done, even though it's opposite the way the fly actually works in, in actual, when you find green grape spinners coming down, they're coming down in the quieter water, the spinners themselves depositing eggs of the whole pool that you're fishing. It's the quieter sections of water. If you fish coffin flies enough in green grapes, you'll know that. They're not coming down in the riffles to lay their eggs like the spinners of many that hang out just over the riffles and drop their eggs. They like to get off to the side and actually drop the eggs in quieter water. And it's called the riffle down, and it's a high floating thing. That's a little funny point, but I know that it's true. So, in a way, those two things fight each other. But you learn about tying it in the course of doing it, and what I do is put the hackle on first. He puts the wings on first, uh, and, and both of those articles have two different sets of wings, and I use two different. I don't often tie it with hackle point wings, but you can, same thing. I've tied these with some dark feathers because I'm looking at the coffin fly. And I like teal, I've used, I think this is gadwall, I just happen to have some of that. It's any of the dark blotchy looking breast feathers, I like for wings. One of the, one of the points that, that he makes, Ted makes, when he ties this for us, is he tells us to, to tie the fly on shiny side down. And I like the way Eric Leiser talks about it. He talks about you bought it for the sheen in it and you want the fish to see that then. So that's a nice way to remember to tie that fly, the, the hackle feather on, shiny side down. One other little thing that I, I, I like tying these kind of flies on a shorter shank hooked 
I, I put my own cough and fly, my cheap and dirty, I, I name it after Betts, it's Econo Betts. If you read John Betts' old stuff and you watch how he ties up a cough and fly, man, there's about 20 steps in it. I, I didn't have that much time, so I knocked about every other step or even more out of John's pattern years ago when he was still around and I was talking with him. And we joked about it, but that's why I call it Econo Betts. And I like it on a short shank hook. Any, any of the extended body flies that I tie. In fact, when Graham first came out with his, his version, he, he kind of wanted to use me on it because I like 94843s. And I t took the trouble to put some of those hooks on paper so that you might compare them. I like a short shank hook for an extended body. Not a lot of iron. That coffin fly comes down almost like a real spinner. Very light high floating. The only problem is this fly is a pain because of the up eye found on most of those short shank hooks, the light wire ones. And so I've settled on using Graham's hook because Graham's hook has what he calls half raised. A half raised eye. It's a pretty looking fly, you've seen them, a low up eye hook, but it's not so far up that you can pass through the eye and attach to the shank, which is why I like an up or a down eye. I don't use the, the same clinch knot that everybody else in the country uses. I don't want to tie to the eye. I want to pass through the eye and tie the leader tippet, now I'm talking, to the shank. So an up eye hook is in the way of tying this pattern, but Graham's is at least a little lower, so I find it easier to use his hook than all the other ones that I like, but there's a the whole range of them. He puts it on after the wings, and he goes this way. I've learned to do all my parachute work that way. Counterclockwise looking down. So I tie that hackle feather shiny side down, and I'll tie it on first instead of later like Ted Niemeyer does. Next I'm going to put wings on a fly. I got this little notebook just because I've segregated some of these gadois feathers. I actually like this gadois better than teal for a coffin fly wing look. <laughs> I don't care about using two feathers for two wings just as I don't care about it when I'm using wood duck in the traditional patterns unless somebody asks for it. But it just works nicely to, to pair a couple of these feathers for this fly. Tie them on just ahead of the, the midpoint, which Ted Niemeyer suggests. And I'm not gonna go too far ahead of that but I'll go to the rear very slightly. And I bring those wings upright. And I'll re-divide them. I don't care if it comes out perfect or not. I just want a pair of wings. I just want a pair of wings, and I like the, the width of the material in, in a pair of wings like this, and like the, the example that I brought to serve in a coffin fly. Then what I'm going to do, and this part is fun too, you're going you're gonna to struggle to get a, a good look of them the first couple times you try to make body and I've tried different things, different approaches. I've got some whole feathers here to start from scratch. Uh, again, this was, I just kept this all together for anybody that wanted to try it. I've got some that I clipped ahead of time. And that's, that took some learning. You can get two of those flies out of one big feather and it's just a hackle feather. Now they talk in, about breast feathers. And which, and I know, I think they're really meaning flank feathers. Right. And you can tie this with mallard and, and the, 
the thing with mounted and stuff is finding symmetrical flank feathers, not as easy as a wood duck, and a wood duck makes a nice feather. So I like using these. What I'll do, I'm, I'm still working really in the web, which gives you a denser body. And I'll make that point that I'm going to be the very front of the body, right at the wings. I want that pretty much in the middle. Then I'll take about the length I want for body, and you can tie sulfurs, you can tie any number of things this way, or the coffin fly. So this will vary per what you want. The best way I found out, found to do it, is to use this heavy webby part of the feather, keep everything else together, and then get those really coaxed down and out. Then take, and this was another tricky thing, you want to use really sharp scissors. I don't use these very much. I don't like the finger holes. They're not, they're a little bit big, but not as big as I like them, but they are sharp. And these are still sharp because I rarely use them. It's one of those Dr. Spock's <laughs> things. I can't even remember his name. Was Schlick. That? That's the one. Schlick. Schlick. What he said. But you want sharp and you want to really hang on to that midpoint so that you can run those scissors down one side. Then go down the other side. Hell, I could afford another beard. That rate that worked pretty good. What talk about is one feather for the tail. So you, I've done it one, I've done it with two, and had a little head cement along it. Either way is okay. This time I've got just the one and I'll reach in and, and get rid of the excess. Nice thing about trying going for two is if I cut one of them off, I can still make it into a one. If I had to, I'd just touch a little head cement on there and bring it out like so. Then I lay this again, it's what would have been shiny side down, so there's a slight curve upward between the wings. The only bad thing about this is choosing the right feather for it that'll stay on top for you. Yeah, most of them want to roll. And a lot of feathers won't stay flat for you right there. This one feels like it's probably gonna, and I'm gonna go in front of the wing, barely, real close to the wing, and I'm gonna do a figure eight on that. Then I'm gonna just stay to the rear, do it again, maybe one more figure eight in place. I don't wanna increase the area in front, so I'll take one more turn and I'll stay right close. Another thing that I do differently is I leave the front of that long and that's so that I can mess with it later. And I'm going to reach in front and come down and just bind that stem down a little. Then I'm simply going to wrap it and the, the magic Part of the magic and the interesting part of the design of this feather is that the, your hackle feather is trapped between the stem of that feather that serves as body and tail and hook shank. So I've got those things trapping that hackle so there's no way it can ride up a post or get loose in some other fashion. It's trapped between those two things. Shiny side down. They suggest two wraps. I really like about three. But you want to be careful of the width of your, how long, how, how much along the shank you took up to get this feather around if you do use three. I'll use two this time in the interest of saving time and I'm just going to trap that so I go underneath that stem. 
Now I'm just tying that off. And what I started messing with uh, two days ago, didn't have time yesterday as it worked out, to get down the oak and get home in good shape to try this. But I'm, I want to I want to get this down too, and that is, I want to learn to using a half inch tool. I want to cut that stem short, but I want to leave enough material to catch the stem and the hook in a whip finish. So now it's really trapped there, and and finish it that way. I haven't done that yet. Haven't got to it yet, so I'll just either either use a whip finish tool or pull that up because I left the stem long enough to work with and tie a two or three turn whip finish. Sharp scissors are going to get that body shape right. <coughs> They're going to let you reach in and, and get this where you'd really like to. They're going to let me clean everything else off and then I'll, I'm just going to cut this with the scissors this time because I buried my uh, tool, but I still like a razor blade. Scalpel. Yeah. So there you have the riffle dump and it's a, you got to tie a few, tie, try different colors. It's, it's not a pattern. Just look at it as a way of tying a fly. You can come up with your own colors and sizes, and you can tie almost anything this style. Just like the two feather. It's not really a pattern, but a style. When you're wrapping that hackle, are you going under the body feather? Under the body feather, over, yeah, but pass that around, Mike. Mm -hmm. It goes under the body feather and over the hook, so that when you leave that body feather long enough until you're all done to cut it off short, it lets you do that quickly, nicely, and it's trapped, period. It's really a fascinating design. So take copies, feel free, and there you have it. And I guess we're done, so we can go party. Cheers! Oh, <laughs> that a trim that, that they were pulling the hackle through their fingers, turning it like feathers it this way. I thought they were using cement and going this way with it. It's got to be the details. You're talking about Harry's. Okay. Again, this is a different design than what you're going to see, and I believe it to be Walt's answer to Harry's two feather. And it's a, it's a different twist. And it incorporates that locking device. So it's really pretty cool. When you look at this fly and think about it, read about it, it's pretty neat. Okay.